Are you interested to learn how to go from zero to 22,000 subscribers and zero dollars to earn 100 plus thousand online? I'm here with two uh, beautiful ladies who have done this on their YouTube channel and with their business online. We're here today to sh hear their stories and get to know Jewel and our read. I uh, imagine we are doing this live, so we'll love to read all your comments and hear what you have to say. Jewel, Ari, thank you for being here today for this live interview. Thanks, Jerry. Oh, awesome to be here. Thanks for having us. So uh, will you help, uh, for those who don't know you yet, will you help us get to know you a little bit, like what you're doing right now and how they can interact with you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we are, we're digital designers, we're YouTube coaches, we basically help other creative entrepreneurs grow their businesses online through beautiful content and through helping them, uh, helping them teach them how to share that content online. And we are, you know, we have a YouTube channel that has uh, over 22,000 subscribers right now. That's where we live. We release daily content on there. So if you want to uh, come hang out with us and engage with us, then that would be the place. And you just go to IamDreamDriven.com and it'll take you straight there. Uh, th thank you. I'll show the YouTube channel. Arik, can we get you a little bit louder? For some reason, the volume just went down on that. Yeah, we'll move. We'll move the microphone closer or I'll just talk louder. It's more. Oh, that sounds time. good. All right. So this is the Esatino Artist YouTube channel, 22,000 subscribers. I encourage yeah. you to join them. Four million views. And as you just heard, there's different days. So Mondays make that money. Tuesday is social media and business tips. Wednesday, Wednesday is video studio. Wednesday, Mind Thrive Thursdays and Dream Driven Fridays is what you can expect. Let's tab back over if I can figure out how to bring you back on here there we go <laughs> all right so how did you end up getting into youtube how did you start your channel so um i signed up for the channel back in 2010 but we didn't actually do anything with it for many many years we just i just sort of signed up because i watched a lot of uh funny videos at the time it was mainly just funny videos that were on youtube but when we started to get into more our entrepreneurial journey um, in 2015, I was trying to do some stuff on our Facebook. So back when Facebook still had like a horizontal, uh, I'm sorry, a vertical banner, a oh, vertical yeah. banner on the left hand side. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, I was trying to watch a tutorial video on something like that. And I ran into a tutorial that was horrible. It was awful, in my opinion, because the tutorial didn't actually have any speaking or words in it. And it had really loud, crazy rock music, like real the intense kind where it's like <laughs> the beat is crazy and it was blasting. And all they did was pull up a notepad and start typing out the instructions of what to do. Now, I did get the information and I was able to do that but it was a horrible way to learn in my opinion because I was really annoyed it was loud I was I didn't want to hear the music so I said that I could create a better tutorial than this like I feel like that I could do a better job and make this more engaging and just get straight to the point for the people so I mustered up the courage to create a first tutorial on our channel. It took me the entire day because I was so scared and worried about being on camera. I had to write every single thing down. And the first, now I can film many videos in a day, but at the time it did take like eight plus hours for me to just, cause I just kept stopping, making mistakes, very self-conscious about how I was speaking. And then that's kind of how the channel was initially born, was doing these tutorials randomly. We didn't start getting into a schedule until uh, early 2016. So you would turn that negative motivation of seeing something you didn't like into the positive action, like, well, I don't like this. I'm going to do something better than that. That's outstanding. And we are, we are, this is a live presentation on YouTube and Facebook, so we will answer any questions you have first if you are here with us live today. Sergey, thanks for listening. Michael, 
Good to see you today, Songram Khan. What's up? Rami says, how do you have more than 200k and don't have views? Well, there's there's people watching right now, so that's views, my friend. The <laughs> next <laughs> then the next step, and if you've got any questions you'd like Jewel and Ari to answer, just drop them on the comments and we will answer them live. There the next step, so I've called this zero to twenty-two K YouTube subscribers and zero dollars to earning uh, over a hundred thousand online. So we we talked about the basics of YouTube. How did you get into making money online? It was always something that was um, well. Actually, let me back up. So, Jewel kind of always had this this aura about her to want to be an entrepreneur, uh, to want to have her own business. I was not in that state at all. I was actually um, I was actually going to school for medicine. Like I was taking all these schools for medical courses uh, for to get into medical school, and. Um, and I was just completely on a different path. And it wasn't until, you know, I, we, I graduated from the University of British Columbia here and I started just working a nine to five job. My marks weren't competitive enough to actually get into med school. So I, I am super grateful for that <laughs> because my God, it allowed me, it gave me a year to really, really think about what I wanted to do and to realize that that's not something that I want to do. I'm actually quite creative. I love creating. I love music. Like music is also another passion of mine. I love design and all that kind of stuff. And it's so it kind of like that. I didn't know I liked, you know, I wanted to create my own business or anything like that, but I just kind of followed that that feeling to just being open to new opportunities. So I had a coworker who asked me to come along to a networking event. And I was like, oh yeah, Jewel likes, you know, she likes that business kind of stuff. I'll drag <laughs> her along and we'll, we'll go to that. And that's really where it all started because Within that networking event, we were exposed to new ideas, to other entrepreneurs, to self-employed people who were doing what they love and and being, you know, living free. Like they're not tied to a boss. They're not tied to like submitting vacation requests and all that kind of thing. We both love traveling a lot. And um, it was just like, like living your life by design, basically. You, you do. Um, you say what goes and you do it like you walk your talk and um, it was just it was really cool It was really cool to just be exposed to those new ideas So that's kind of how the seed germinated but from there like when once we were at that stage We were just like we absorbed everything every different kind of business every like book every like meeting we went to um, we like went to, we became part of different, um, um, what's it called? Like MLMs, like network marketing companies and all that kind of stuff. So we really just tried and did a whole bunch of stuff. We started doing websites, web designs for other businesses as well. We learned everything on our own and it just, it, you know, it just kind of molded from there. Cause you really, you don't know what you want to do right off the bat. You really don't, you're expected to. When, um, you know, from high school, you're expected to know exactly what you want to do with your life, go and take this course and all that kind of thing. But it really doesn't work like that. You, it, I really just kind of attribute it to just being open to new opportunities and just realizing how you feel once you're in those experiences. If you feel joy and happiness and you're just having an amazing, wonderful time, then that is something you should follow. And if it's opposite, get rid of it. It doesn't have a place in your life. Yes, thank you. You've reminded me. I'm like, wow, I take for granted now I don't have to ask for vacation. Like, I <laughs> don't wake up to an alarm. Like, that's normal. And at one point, that seemed fantasy. So how oh, yeah. You make yeah. That? For the majority of people, it's uh, that's like their everyday life. And I specifically remember when I would need to get vacation time, you had to fill out this form and say like why you were going and where you were going and the dates and then uh and there was many other people working in the company as well so th there's lots of people booking time and you can't have too many people go at the same time and then you would, i would take this paper and put it in their tray for approval 
And sometimes it would sit there until like the end of the week, like three, four days. <laughs> and I would just be sitting there like all nervous day after day waiting for this approval. And sometimes it didn't get approved. And I remember that feeling. And now it's like, oh, we want to book something. We'll just, okay, let's just, book, just it. book it. <laughs> <laughs> How did you make the transition? So you you went to a networking event and then you started absorbing. How yeah. did you go from, all right, we're excited, we're going to do this, we're learning stuff. How did you go from that into having things that actually you were looking at like, wow, this is consistently working to make money? Like, how did you get to the point where you looked at it and said, I think we can we can do this? So in 2010 and 11, uh, yeah, Arit brought up that meeting. And then from that meeting, we started going to every single networking thing that was happening in Vancouver. Those, those ones at the hotels, at the casinos, on the boats, in coffee shops, in restaurants. Like every day after work, we went to a new type of meeting whether it was paid or free. And uh, we, uh, we were um, shown many different things. And one of the first things that we started doing was uh, website design with Wix. So Wix is very prominent now and you probably see the ads all the time on YouTube. But back in 2010 and 11, they weren't as big as they were now. It was so different. And we would do something different with Wix because Wix had like their very primitive um, website editor. And we did something where we would get the domain and then redirect it or through WordPress and do some sort of redirecting thing. But then you can still do it under Wix or something. I can't even remember exactly how it went, but it was like Wix, WordPress, and buying your own domain off of GoDaddy. And we would make these uh, websites for people in the beginning. And we just started off uh, doing that. And then uh, we realized we didn't like designing websites. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a ton of work and there's a lot involved with it. You really need to enjoy the the design and the whole building process of doing website, hence why we're getting another company <laughs> to do our current website right now. Uh, they're doing a much better job um, with, with our needs. Uh, but yeah, we just started doing uh, websites from there and just it, being really open to honestly, whatever idea came up. Cause people would always suggest, read that book, read that book, read this article, read that. And we did it all. We absorbed, everything and i believe it's led us to the path that we are now and how i was able to leave my job initially was actually not my choice it's not the way i wanted it to go um, and it was actually a surprise so uh, <laughs> i had read the book the secret and i believe you know it as well jerry and after i read the book the secret i with my full body and energy, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I did not want a nine to five job anymore. I was, had decided that I don't think that I'm going to live a very happy life if I have like a nine to five, if I have a boss, if I'm not in control and I'm not creating what I want to create. I don't think I'm going to be happy and I can't picture myself doing this, um, you know, until I retire which is what a lot of people do is, you know, they work at the same, like my parents worked at the same job for like 30 plus years. I couldn't imagine doing that at the current company that I was at. So in 2011, February, I think it was 23rd. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, God, she had a great <laughs> one, by the way. It's very accurate. I worked at an insurance company in downtown Vancouver and I was called into the HR office and uh, you know, they brought me in the room and I knew right away that, okay, this was the end here. This was going to be the end because I was not doing work at my nine to five. I was a claims clerk slash adjuster and I'm supposed to take calls to uh, when someone gets into a car accident or something floods in their home, something happens to their home. I'm supposed to take calls and create these claims and um, pay the pay these uh, invoices and bills that would come from auto body shops and things like that. So that was my job. 
Um, so I wasn't doing my job. And so they pulled <laughs> me into the HR office. I was working on Esatino in its infancy stage um, as it was a, a little baby um, company. Uh, at the time, I was building the website and trying to do blogs and just trying to do these things in the beginning. And I was called into the HR and they fired me on the spot. They asked, they, you know, presented some things. They're like, did you not answer the calls? Did you um, not do the work that, you know, you're supposed to be doing? And I didn't lie. I said, this is true. And uh, they said, why, like, why, are, why did you do this? And um, I told them the truth and said that this job is no longer fulfilling. I don't like this job anymore. And then they heard my response. And I, sa I said, <laughs> I, I feel like a robot in this <laughs> job. And then after I finished my statement, then they said, okay, then you're terminated. You're fired. And I did not even get to go back to my desk to say goodbye to anyone. Like I had friends there they brought all my stuff to the HR and I was escorted out of the building and downstairs. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> and, and that was the end of my nine to five. I had this whole dream and plan that I was going to walk into HR with this letter of <laughs> resignation and be like, I'm already making enough of this money that I don't need this job anymore. I had this all this smooth plan laid out. And what's funny was Arit actually worked in a building, um, the same street, but two buildings down in an HR, uh, H, was it a uh, human resources? It, they provide counseling services to employees of other companies. So it's like a employee health, mental health benefits yeah. company. And it was literally two, three buildings down on the same street. So I called her, I had composure at this moment and then I called her and then I heard her, she's like, Hey, what's up, Jewel? And then all of a sudden I just like burst into tears. So I was crying, totally upset. And then I managed to say the words, like I got fired and she was in shock cause we weren't expecting this. And, um, you know, I had parked across the street in this underground parking in the hotel, uh, the Marriott hotel. That's where I would park when I was late because um, <laughs> it's right across the street, but you had to pay like $25 parking for the day. So I, I managed to get to the car and I was just going to lay in the car and cry there until Ari had her lunch break so she could come visit me. When I got <laughs> to the car, I had a parking ticket because even though I paid for parking, I missed the letter of the license plate and so they still gave me a ticket so i had i just got fired i go to my car i have this parking ticket for like 120 dollars, and i already paid 25 for parking and <laughs> i'm just laying there um thinking my life is over really down like i couldn't even i was so embarrassed because you know now it's like it's it's more accepted that you do your own thing now and everyone wants to be an entrepreneur but in 2011 it wasn't that hot and it wasn't that popular yet so being fired like i was really embarrassed and ashamed that i managed to to do to do that and when <laughs> Arie got to the car she's like i think this is a sign i think I know you didn't want to go this way, but I think that this is from the universe, from the secret. And I think that this is a good thing. And um, I think that this is going to help Esatino grow. So she managed to calm me down by saying things like that. And then later that day, we actually had a meeting with a potential website uh, sale. So this lady had wanted to book a meeting for her to inquire about websites, the Wix websites. And so at 5 p.m., I managed to get ice and put it on my face and <laughs> relieve all the, because you know when you cry so hard, your face gets all puffy and your eyes are all red and you just look horrible. So I managed to clean myself up, get to this coffee shop at 5 p.m. I've just been fired, got this parking ticket, and we meet the, this lady, show her the Wix website plan. And uh, by the end of it, she's like, yeah, I'd like a website. And she gave us a check for $500. Nice. That was our first ever 
Esatino business sale. Same wow. day she got fired from her job. <laughs> yeah. So it was like I went from being fired to getting this parking ticket and then making our first ever business sale. And that, even though it was like so horrible that I had lost my job, uh, that sale that very same day, literally hours after, uh, reassured me that everything was going to be okay and that that was the right move, even though it wasn't my move um, initially. <laughs> well, the universe, we now know, and it's happened so many times that, you know, things just happen in life and you you may not understand them when they're happening. You're just full of emotion and you're upset, but they happen for a reason. There's a bigger design in, that in we're not play. necessarily aware of. Yeah. And and I felt that. I felt that when that happened to her, it's like Jewel was saying, it's like I, I think this I think this is good. In a weird way, I think this is good. And um and it was confirmed that later that evening we made our first sale. Yeah. And even though it was like, yeah, we made our first sale, it wasn't totally uphill and everything went great after that. No. A week <laughs> later, a week later after that, I got into a car accident. And what I had, my SUV like was, uh, um, I had to get, get rid of it because it wasn't drivable anymore. So the, the stuff kept happening. Um, and it will continue to do so <laughs> in the entrepreneur journey. It will continue to do so. But I think, I think the one thing that like, you, you know, you were asking, what is that from trying all these new things? How did you know that what you're doing now is, is something that, you know, you're, you're going to be pursuing, um, you, you just kind of look for cl those clues, like the, when they happen, you know, you, you kind of follow those clues. Like we followed the web design path, like providing web design services because it was in demand and it was, it was fun actually at first. It was fun at first. WordPress was booming. Um, with, yeah. With WordPress blogging. was booming and like it, it, it worked well, but the thing is you have to kind of learn to let go when something's not for you or you're just not enjoying it anymore because if you continue to stay in that space it's just like being employed and you're you're kind of boxing yourself in a job that you don't like so it's okay and it's okay to to move on to something else um and it's just yeah it's just about following those clues so the way that we were managed, we were able to grow this YouTube channels because it's something that we really, really enjoy doing. And it's different. Every single day is different. We film a different video every single day. We never run out of ideas. <laughs> like it's really surprising. How many videos do we have on this channel? Like over a thousand. Yeah. Over a thousand and there's, videos. it's just, it continues to come and it's, um, and it's, and it's rewarding too, because we get to see people are actually watching, they're following, they're subscribing the comments, the that, stories that we hear from yeah, people stories. that have messaged us. Like example, yesterday I did like a cashback video because there's this website called Ebates that is now Rakuten um, and it's a cashback site. And I was just announcing it saying like, don't worry, it's the same kind of site. It's just different name. And then someone messaged me and said that the video that I created about cashback with gas gift cards they now do that all the time and they've managed to get a couple hundred dollars in cash back through these gas gift cards. And I love, I always encourage like our fans and people who watch to let me know like a story or whatever. Cause I love hearing how our videos were able to help you or got through something or just helped you do something easier that day. Well, I love hearing that too. And we've got lots of questions on the live chat. This is live. So we'll look back and get these, see what people have said. Jason says life does happen. Even they said it in Batman. When life goes according to plan, it's okay. But when life doesn't go accordingly to plan, people lose their minds. <laughs> What's yeah. up, Red One Prince? We had a question I saw. Fluffy Pickle, good to see you on Twitch. Adam says, who is stronger, Go Getta or Vegetto? I'm not sure to use those. Fluffy Pickle says, are those your girlfriends? Very nice, man. <laughs> no, the business partners. <laughs> Adam says, you ever get... Nope, not reading that whole one. Sergey says, that was probably the best thing that ever happened to you about losing your job. Ah, Ryan Cole. Ryan, I hope you're still here because Ryan, Ryan, I imagine, is relating a lot with what you just said, Jewel. 
Ryan says for 2020, starting with zero experience, what's the first what's the first step? What new marketing trends and details would be important? Example, the zero point spot on Google. And then there's another one from Samuel. Samuel says, how to differentiate yourself from other channel proposing exactly the same content as you? That's so, a good question. Well, to so let's go back to the first question um, about the 2020 thing. Yeah, uh, live streaming. <laughs> live streaming is yes. uh, yeah, <laughs> like this, right? It's I mean, just starting out, it's scary. Like if you're not someone who goes on video, um, live streaming is like kind of it may seem like an intimidating step. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you can't really get to that right away, then just being on recorded video or something, um, just making, it, it really depends on where you're at, but I would say make one small step towards that goal that you have of, you know, starting an online business or starting a channel or whatever it is, because I'm not. Uh, maybe you could let us know what what it is that you're thinking if it's just make you know i was gonna say like it can't just be making money online because yeah. there's a ton of ways to make money online there's no one way anymore it is a ton of different ways so you really have to find something that you are in it because you absolutely love the journey of it like we love the journey of creating videos and speaking engaging with our viewers and all that kind of stuff we love the journey of it because it's really it's a long-term game like being an entrepreneur is a long-term game and you you have to enjoy every single day of it because it's it's difficult it's difficult to get up and tell yourself what time you're gonna start <laughs> get certain tasks done and because you, you just like you roll out in your pjs and you just want to like go back to bed or like just peace out and go for a walk outside but like it's yeah you you have to you have to eventually put a structure on that because that's the way you systemize things and that's what's going to help grow whatever it is that you're you're working on i would recommend trying out a bunch of different things like if you're evergreen and you're new and you've never really done online stuff try a bunch of different things out because you'll know whether you can see yourself doing something long-term because there's a bunch of things that we let go that could have made us money still now, but we don't enjoy doing the process. A couple of examples, um, Amazon FBA private labeling. It's totally hot topic. Everybody, like you basically find a product on Alibaba, um, brand it yourself, order a bunch of units and then send it into Amazon and then you sell it. Obviously there's much more research and stuff involved. Um, and I did it, but I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy the whole process of it and the, the way that the world is with private labeling. People are pretty crazy out there with, if you have another product that's similar to someone else's product, like they'll try and tear you down. And, and another thing, um, Merch by Amazon, which was um, like, uh, creating designs and putting it on uh, t-shirts onto the merge platform. That was a very simple thing, easy thing. You think of designs, you upload it onto merge. But for us, it because it ended at the upload, we didn't we don't have any connection with the customer. We can't talk to the customer. We don't know the customer. Yeah. The sales still happen every day, but I'm not connected to it. Some people like that. Yeah, some, some people are totally. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You've got to try out different things and find out what's good for you because this, the same thing what I'm saying is not necessarily going to be good for you. There are people killing it in um, private labeling, people killing it in Merch by Amazon. You can literally make money doing anything, but you have to be connected to it. And for us, it's like video, YouTube. We like working with the customers and the clients um, on a personal basis. So we like that connection. I forgot what the second question was. Yeah, <laughs> Let me, I will scroll back up. We'll take a look and see what was that first question. The first question was. If you know, all right, we're scrolling back. Here's a quick one. Which blogger or WordPress, which do you prefer? <laughs> WordPress. 
I haven't used Blogger, but yeah, WordPress was like our initial starting Just point. Because he, there's more control. You have more control. I feel like for me, I am more comfortable in WordPress and I feel like I can create anything within that platform. Whereas Blogger, it's a little bit more limitations. That's just my opinion. Yeah, same, same here with me. And the, the first question was, how do you do a, how do you differentiate yourself from other channels? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good question because there's a ton of people doing, probably doing what you're doing already. It's yeah. your personality and your authenticness that's going to stand out because there's people already teaching about how to make money online with Amazon and how to do so uh, Facebook tutorials and how to do Camtasia tutorials. Like these are the kinds of videos we create, um, but it's our personality and it's my little quirks that I say in the videos. It's the way I act. That's what makes you stand out. If I'm trying to be someone else and trying to be fake, then the viewers can feel that and see that. So don't, try and be fake in your videos unless you're doing like an acting thing and it's like a show and skit then yes that's fine <laughs> but if you're doing like tutorial type things like don't don't be fake or anything just be yourself and that will sell yourself yeah your own personal style whether that is the way you speak the way you edit your videos you know the way you communicate like it the the structure of the videos you're releasing it's all comes down to like Jewel was saying personality and style um and everyone connects with different people so even though that person's already talking about that and that person's already talking about that they might connect better with you everyone's got these energies that they are connected to and attracted to so like even though i like certain motivational speakers like i really like gary vaynerchuk but already likes him too, but not as much because he's a little crazy and intense sometimes. Um, so not everybody will like him, but like everyone's attracted to the different energies. I was going to say um, a good example is Casey Neistat. He's a, he's a vlogger. Um, so there were a ton, a ton of people. There's a ton of vloggers out there, a ton of people vlogging on YouTube, right? But what really made him stand out was his style, his style of Vlog. editing yeah and the way that he um he told a story in a very unique way his storytelling is very unique so it just think about what you know what makes you unique and just bring that out and if you are just doing a tutorial channel like we are it's just gonna come out naturally just by you being yourself yeah for and for me i do mine my style is just no editing so you just get I don't know. You reminded me, this one guy loved a tutorial I did on Facebook ads because I dropped a Tupac line with a MF bomb in it, right? Like, unsuspecting <laughs> in the middle of it. So, like, you, no one expects that in a Facebook ads tutorial. So, yes, exactly. just be yourself and maybe the call to action is minimize what you're editing. Just put yourself out there, even if it is low quality. Let's see if we've got... Let's see the newest questions. Red one says, I want a girlfriend. <laughs> YouTube is paying a $170 million fine. Adam says, these ladies just get views. Jerry has to be Batman or Scorpion. <laughs> Jason says, how do we find those girls on the web? Do they have a website? If Jason, when you check in the description, I've got links to the Essentino Artist YouTube channel. I've got links to... Arit's music, Arit's music channel. You can hire them for graphic design. Yeah, I've got Arit's Spotify in here and their Make That Money playlist. So you've got you got lots of links you can use in the description. Have we got viewers from India, from Morocco? Red One says, can you give me $10? <laughs> Ryan Cole says, I'm in insurance and finance. I think insurance licensing then how to use software and systems. Ryan says, I want to build a digital university. I'm interested to know why you want to build a digital university, Ryan. Kamlesh says, how can I earn a lot of money? Please tell me. There's lots of ways, lots of ways uh, to earn money online. Um, provide value. Yeah, provide. That's how you earn a lot of money. 
period. <laughs> the, the vehicle, the system is like, there's a ton of different ways, but at the end of the day, it's just providing value because that's what makes someone give you their hard earned dollars. It's funny talking uh, my with you too, because it's like everyone who's, uh, there's like some secret and like everyone that is doing well is in on it. Like, yes, how do you make money online? Provide a lot of value. Like to me, that's super obvious. Like, <laughs> it didn't used to be. And it yeah, used to be. Yeah. So maybe some extra definition, like what do you, what do you mean by value for somebody who's like, well, provide value. What does that mean? Yeah, so it can it could be many different forms and it can so it depends what is your thing, right? What do you is it do you have something that you're really good at, a skill that you can teach to someone? Um, if you don't even like teaching, don't even go that route. You know, it's just like it go with something that you actually enjoy doing because again, it's going to matter for the long term. You sticking with that and you making a lot of money from it, it's going to matter in the long term that you actually enjoy what you're doing. So maybe you like doing skits, right? You're in comedy. That's a form of providing value. You're providing entertainment. You're making someone laugh. You're making someone smile at the end of a hard day's work when they come home. Like it's, look at what, what make a list of all of your strengths and is, is where I would say to start. And also make a list of things that you enjoy. Um, and also make a list of things that you would like to get better at that you wanna work on and do two things. So look at your strengths and what you enjoy and find something that has common ground amongst those two lists and just do something with that. Pursue some, like think about how you can provide value in that specific niche. And then the things that you wanna get better at, create your own little personal curriculum. You know, you don't need a university or a school to tell you what you need to learn. You can create it yourself. You have Google at your fingertips. You have online courses. You have so you have a wealth of information at your fingertips. So if you decide the skills that you want to get better at, and that it will, you know, you know these things will help you in the long run. Maybe it's communication, the way you talk. Um, it's maybe it's video editing, in which case Jewel can help you with that if you need to. Um, then you know, decide what it is, and every every morning. 30 minutes is all you need at the very least, 30 minutes to an hour. Just sit down, learn, learn a little bit and just keep doing that. Um, because providing value, it's, it's not like you learn, you learn something once or you already know a skill and then you just teach it and there you go. You need to grow as you help other people grow. You know, like what, what you're learning will matter and will come out um, as you help other people and provide value to them. I always recommend like people to start a channel because you can literally start a channel about anything, anything. these days yeah. to give you some personal examples of people that we know. We have a follower who uh, has their own um, rabbits channel. So the care of taking care of rabbits as a pet. So she has a channel on how to have the cage and change it and feed them. And it's all about rabbits. And she has like, I think over a hundred thousand subscribers. So there's that, there's that, the chat about rabbits. And then a couple of one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching uh, YouTube clients that we have, we have a client who um, went through an eating disorder. So he would do like binging and purging. So he wanted to create a channel to help people who are going through binging and purging. So he puts out like, I think videos daily now about uh, strategies to get over that kind of thing. Cause he went through that for many years. We have another lady who has a business uh, for protecting your business assets when a disaster happens, a natural disaster. So like earthquake, floods, fire. And so she created a channel about how to uh, protect your your documents and things like that during that kind of natural disaster. So like, those aren't normal channels. Those aren't like <laughs> typical channels. So you can create like really anything and start with like what you know and what you're passionate about first, what you like doing in general, and then work off of that. Another thing too, if you're not necessarily, like you can't think of anything that you, 
um, you know a lot a lot about, but you know you want to teach or help other people learn more about the subject, then interview other people who who are experts on that subject. If you're really really passionate about space, that you just love the stars and whatever, but you don't know like you don't know much about the subject yourself, well then interview other people who are experts and you will naturally learn yourself and also share that value and information with your audience. Oh, oh you're on to me. <laughs> That's Yes, interviews are a very good format. You can literally know almost nothing. And as long as you can be a good listener, you can interview people and help other people bring out their talents. That's another form of value is just be someone who helps others do their best. Uh, let's that... take a look at the questions. I, I love hearing your answers. It helps me just, you know, you never get away from the basics. Always make sure to keep those basics in mind. Let's see what we've got. Michael with Waking Eye Hypnosis says, yes, follow the universe. Ross says, why do people delete your referral part from the link you give them? I don't know. Adam, nice <laughs> for watching. Umar says, I'm a senior software developer by profession. Whenever I decide to make video lectures to teach others, but I always go back because there are too many tutorials already on the internet. So that gives me to skip the idea. What's your suggestion? I would still create them and still, I mean, if you want to teach people uh, through your method of teaching, even though there's a ton of videos, like still put out your version because it's different. It's different from everybody else. And like, like we were saying before, everyone has different personalities and energies that people are attracted to. Like the Facebook tutorial that I do on how to change your Facebook URL, like there's a million of those, but our video, like I create that video every year and I update it. People tend to like it. People like the way that I get straight to the point and teach it. So I would still create the tutorial and it leads to many opportunities. Like creating a YouTube channel creates a lot of opportunities. You can also take a look at all of those channels that are out there and, um, and just ask yourself, you know, how can you be different from what's already, what's already out there? Yes, absolutely. You're already naturally going to be different. Like you speaking, your style, your personality is going to be different from that, that um, from other channels out there. But if you want to take it a step further, then maybe, you know, be the channel that does live streams on that topic, because that already weeds out a lot of people. A lot yeah. of people don't do live streams. Um, or go and create like a digital product on it. If they're, you know, look at that space, if you want to go a different route. Um, but there's just, there's so many things that you could do. It's, it's, um, or ideas or always explode as an entrepreneur. <laughs> go through the comments of those people's videos that you, that they already created videos on and see what they didn't answer. See what mm -hmm. the questions that people are asking that weren't answered. If there's a common question or create videos on all those other questions, you can do that too. So it sounds like we're talking a lot about the mindset here that you see a world of opportunity. You'll always be guided into an opportunity that's just right for you to just create where it's needed regardless of how others are doing it yeah just create create the space that you want to be in you're not going to be the first person to do whatever you're doing guaranteed in this world right now there's going to be hundreds millions of other people already doing it but you can still do it too unless you're elon musk but you know yeah. like <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're inventing something like crazy but um but yeah, just you decide where you want to be and create that space around it and and just go all in with that and just see what happens. And like I said, if you figure out that later on that it's not really for you, you're not enjoying it, then pivot and do something slightly different. You don't have to stay boxed into that for the rest of your life. And pivot, so many pivots I'm imagining from the, I think we've got most of the comments. We're very interested to answer any more comments you've got during the live video here. What's up, Fury? 
Neo, I will pay you 30,000 Robolux in T-Pose. <laughs> Can I? All right, so I have a question. I have an interesting I, audience, Jerry. I don't I understand do. half of the comments that they <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're very excited to answer any more questions you have live. Fight, fr fighter bro, one on one. What's up? And I've got a question I'm interested in in asking. From I remember when I went to an MLM program in 2004, and I didn't think I could make money. I tried a couple of scams, and MLM thing kind of ripped me off. I found out the guy like two levels above me in the MLM wasn't hardly making any money and he wouldn't even talk about how little it was. And I remember thinking what a fantasy it was to not wake up to an alarm, to have the freedom to do whatever you want to. What kind of brings being an entrepreneur like with that looks very outwardly successful, established YouTube channel, hundreds of thousands of dollars earned online. What kind of balances that out? What are the things that stink? about it that you don't deal with when you have a nine to five job like for people who think they want to be an entrepreneur but don't realize you know what it's going to be like actually doing it take it away <laughs> so <laughs> um you can get burnt out pretty easily because you're doing everything when you're first starting out you're you're you know we have to film edit upload do the seo like we're we're the two, only two employees in Asatino. So we're doing everything and it's all up to you. So if in the beginning, you know, you don't have anything established, you don't have any passive income and you don't have multiple streams, then you work your ass off and you work a lot and you can get burnt out really easily. You know, at a nine to five, you'll still be tired, but you go nine to five and you end for that day. But when you're an entrepreneur, you don't really end at five. You kind of just continue on until the night. <laughs> um, and it doesn't really stop. And even then when you're sleeping, you're still thinking about what you need to do the next day. So for me, like burnout happens. Uh, that's a very real thing that happens. And um, also, I sometimes I do miss, um, even though there's like a politics of everything, I do miss having uh, like coworkers. And we used to do like, fun parties and games and it's like it's lonelier being an entrepreneur that's why you know we join the partners group and we have the the weekly call with you jerry um and we talk with a, a lot of other entrepreneurs because it can get uh lonely um because it's just you know it's just you or it's just like me and Arie, and um we don't really have many people to talk to about it you have to make an active effort to to be social um whereas in an office environment you it's by default you're just around other people right and you don't realize that it meant something to you until it's gone um so so yeah that definitely would be um one that i would list it's just you know it is a little bit lonelier but you have to make that active effort to to talk to other people. There's a ton of entrepreneurs now online and, and meetup groups and, and yeah, and yes, support groups. And uh, another thing that I would say is that um, it's it's all up to you whether or not you make money. You're not going to get a stable check coming in every month, whether you do a little bit of work or a lot of work. Um, as an entrepreneur, that kind of you know the financial pressure can can get rough um it definitely was like that in the beginning and it's 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 always going to be there because you know it's all up to you to put that effort into play so you kind of have to i feel like being an entrepreneur has really toughened up our skins like you because it gives you that kind of grit and that like strength to just like push through no matter what um, and just to find new ways, if something's not working, you just, again, comes back to pivoting. Like you have to, you have to be, um, like decisive. You have to, if you're pivoting, you, you stick to that decision. You go all in with that. You focus, you see if you can make it work. So it's, it's very much a mindset game. Um, and, and you kind of have to have that mental toughness because it's a roller coaster. There's a lot of, there's highs, but there's really low lows as well. If you don't have a strong mindset in the beginning, 
um, then when stuff happens, when stuff explodes, then it becomes very difficult to get through and, you, you know, potentially you give up and go back and that type of thing. So in the first early years, like we spent a lot on working on the mental side of things, mm -hmm. toughening up our brain, reading, watching, like every day watching videos, reading books, listening to audios. We stopped listening to radio for a certain point in time because it was all like the audiobooks and podcasts and uh, YouTube videos of any like only like motivational, positive, strength growing stuff. We did not want anything that was going to deteriorate our brain because you really need a thick skin because it's tough out there. Stuff happens, as you know, Jerry, like it's not stable. It's not stable like in the nine to five uh, where you, you pretty much know how your day's going to go. Like every day I knew exactly how it was going to go. And that's what was making me so depressed at that job was that I knew how it was going to go every day for years and years. And I didn't want that. That was making me so sad. But although you don't know what's going to happen in the entrepreneur world, it's very exciting. Uh, lots of good things can happen, but then also bad things. So there's like, you got to be able to bounce back real quick so that's for something. example getting yeah. banned on platforms which yeah. we share yeah lot. we shared our story about how we got banned on fiverr and yeah. then um that was a, a big blow to us earlier this year in february um but we bounced back and even better um so yeah there's many unexpected things that can happen yeah so when things like that happen that like the rug is just like swept out from under you um, you have to be ready mentally to deal with that because you can easily just go back to a nine to five job because of that stability. Right. Um, but, you know, you, you have to you have to brainwash yourself with all of that positive, the positivity, because it's going to come in handy along this entire journey, because by default, we, you know, there's, there's doubt that creeps in, like there's negative self-talk, like, can we, can we actually do this? Um, are we good enough? Like, look at that person over there, how much money they're making and how successful they are. And it, there's like a whole bunch of mind games that happen um, when you're on this journey. So the, the key is really to, to stay focused and to just continue brainwashing yourself with positivity, like tapping into videos, books, and how other um, role, how, uh, how of your, your other role models think, like how other positive people think. And that's why it's really important to find uh, something that you really love and, and enjoy, like our YouTube channel, because when the shit hits the fan <laughs> and when things go wrong, that love, that original love for what you, you like doing, the YouTube channel, will pull you through because things will crumble. Things will go bad. And if it's something that you don't really like doing and, it, and stuff goes bad, then you'll likely leave it, which, you know, that's what happened for us with, you know, with the different ventures with the website. Like, I didn't like doing that, so we just, like, left it. We left that. We left that. But we've now, after doing so many things, we've realized we like this and we like this. So we're just going to continue on with that. Very powerful answers. They're matching my experience the same. So the uncertainty and lack of security as an entrepreneur online is if you are just fantasizing about it, when you get into that uncertainty and lack of security, it's, it's tough and it's lonely lots of times in the yes. But they've got to keep up on the mental strength on it. Let's take a look at some more questions. Zane says, how to make a perfect video. Alex says, is there a link to their channel? Yes, check the description on YouTube. There's a link to their channel. You can, Crazy Gamer says, how do, can I start a gaming channel in 2019? Do tutorial videos, just like we talked about. Think about how you can help other gamers alex is interested into what happened on fiverr we got a question on how to create strong relationships with people and fighter bro said how exactly do you know how much should you do or when you should chill out i noticed that my watch time turns out to be a lot less than how long i work on videos any ideas 
And do you need any of those red again? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We're going to go backwards because we heard that last one first. So the question was, um, watch time is less the more work they spend on a video. Yeah. How do you know when to chill out? I've struggled a lot with this because an entrepreneur, like you said, you start out, you're hustling, you're working so hard. How do you know when to relax a little bit and stop sprinting and prepare for the marathon? Mm, Good question. It's when you identify your primary quality output. So what is that, that, that main output piece that gives you the most back? So, you know, if it's, for example, putting out videos is something that you're doing in addition to, um, in addition to blogging, in addition to like posting on social media, in addition to all of these tasks that we have as entrepreneurs, but you're really seeing like you're seeing more come out of your channel, more out of your your videos, pay more attention to that, put more time into that without extending the number of hours of work in a day. So just kind of, so make it more concentrated, right? Like if You can decide yourself how many hours in a day you want to work. Yes, everyone says, you know, just go like hustle, hustle, work, 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 work. But you got to remember you're you're living this entrepreneurial journey because you want to design your life in a certain way. And you don't want if you don't want to be you don't want a life of like like 20 hours a day of work, you know, just hustle like that. Then you got to at some point you know, decide, okay, I'm, I only want to work like six hours a day. And in order to do that, you have to first have tested a lot of things and tried out exactly what is outputting, what is really outputting the most for you, because the more that you focus on that, it will grow. It'll give you more. It's that 80, 20 rule, you know, what 20% of things are giving you 80% of results that you want. So Focus more, spend more time on those 20% of things without extending the number of hours in your day. When we first started doing entrepreneurship, we were really strict with ourselves. And we went from, so not being an entrepreneur, so we would like, um, you know, go clubbing all the time and just like be whatever and just like all fun only. And then we said, okay, we're going to be entrepreneur now. And we were like, zero fun. And we literally just cut it out completely. And I remember distinctly it being the 2010 Winter Olympics here in Vancouver. And the city was on fire. Like everyone was here. The whole world was watching it. And we were up in the office just working away. (laughs) And for that entire year, we just, uh, we did not have fun. And it turned out to be really bad. Like it made for some pretty bad emotional breakouts and it catches up with you. Yeah. Like, like it's kind of like you break down. And so now we don't do that. Now we are very focused, but we also implement like a lot of adventures and fun. Now, like we like doing a lot of uh, our little blog videos that we do. Uh, So, I mean, it's, it's all up to you because for instance, Gary Vaynerchuk, he doesn't have any fun at all. Like he's just, his fun is just doing all work, but that's him. And a lot of people think like, oh, I need to be like him and just work 24 seven and not have any fun and just do what he does. But you need to like, see how you react to that because I couldn't be like that. I need to have travel vacations and have fun for me. So you need to understand like what is going to be everyone's schedule is different. Everyone's the way they do it is different. So you need to play around with that yourself. Um, And if you know that you need to have some fun, otherwise you're going to go crazy and get upset, then you need to implement that into your schedule. Yeah, it's amazing how many similar experiences we've had with, the, you know, let's go crazy and work as hard as I can. And then, oh, now I'm really not feeling good because of all this. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. Well, I loved your answer on the, the original question was somewhere on here on the chat. Is the, are the, is the video quality good? I'm interested if you're watching, how's the video? Is it loading or is it buffering a lot? 
Let's see. I think on Facebook it looks good because we have it here on the, the mobile. It looks good here. Crazy Gamer says your video is really helpful. Alex says he found your channel. Awesome. What? Thanks for checking it out. Oh, here we go. Here's a good one. Let's tackle this one. Uh, how how to create long and strong relationships with people. Mm, you're good at that. So <laughs> <laughs> you're not. <laughs> um, so I'd be interested in knowing. Are, do you mean like friends, business, business partners, that kind of thing? Um, I mean, I can give a, a more general answer, but. Um, just to let you know, like us working together and stuff, it's not always fun, high vibes and that kind of thing, right? When you're, you're, um, you have relationships with business partners, with friends, with your part, your partners, your spouse, that kind of thing, um, you have differences. Each person is different and different opinions. And so I think it's really important to be able to listen to each other's opinions. So listening is really, really important rather than being stuck in your own mind because it's really easy to do that. <laughs> it's really easy. We both have strong personalities in our own way. So this is something we like we're we're learning, right? It's um, you have to really be um, able to listen to the other person and come up with a compromise uh, because if you want it one way, they want it another way, the, there's only going to be middle ground so that both of you can be happy um, on a certain decision. So you have to kind of be willing to, to compromise. Um, in terms of like long relationships, again, I don't know if we're talking like dating and that kind of stuff, but that's how I would answer in terms of like a business partner relationships, uh, because it's, you know, we've been, we were best friends since high school, but, um, like, like we've known each other since grade eight, yeah, since, grade eight. We, since we were like 12 and 13 years old, <laughs> but that kind of like friend relationships is different. Like the, it's a different kind of tone from actually working together because we're both so passionate about this business. And like we have, we share common goals. I think that's another thing that's important is to, to realize that you share a common goal and that you're on the same team because once you get into a fight or an argument it feels like you're you're on different teams and you're like you know we we don't want the same things but you're actually you actually do and it's the fact that you care about it so much and you're so passionate about it that it causes this turmoil so you have to realize you're on the same team and you have to realize um how can we show each other that we're on the same team? Like, what do I need to show and bring to the table in order for them to feel supported and vice versa? It has to work both ways. In the beginning, when we first started this whole entrepreneurial journey, we were just like, we just want to make as much money as possible, as fast as possible. Like, that's what we wanted. Like, we just want to be entrepreneurs. The internet world and social media wasn't that popping yet. And now it's evolved into we want to help as many people as, as we can in specific, like we want to help people with their YouTube channels, people who want to start channels and get their message out. We want people to feel what we felt, um, you know, going from a nine to five to not having a nine to five to being more to having that freedom. So we want more people to experience that. We're, we're focused on helping people. That's why our videos, they're all free on our channel and they just get straight into the point and they just teach you whatever we're talking about in the video. We don't hold any information back. So that's our focus now. But in the beginning, it was like, let's just make a lot of money. I feel like <laughs> a lot of people start there when they know they want to be an entrepreneur. They just start with like, I want how to make a lot of money online, right? Um, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily know right off the bat, they want to help someone or have this dream to help other people. I wanted to make money and become an entrepreneur so that I can do music full time. That's how it, like it started. Like I, I was like, okay, we're going to like break out of this nine to five mold. I'm going to have this business that's going, going to make money. And then I can go off and like spend time on music and touring and that kind of thing. But it evolved into like, I love helping other creative entrepreneurs. I love, it's so rewarding for me to see that I've helped someone 
start a YouTube channel or create their first piece of content or get a message, they're getting a message from someone telling them that they helped them because I'm the one who inspired them to get started online. Like it, it evolves into that. So don't feel like right off the bat, you have to have this dream to help a whole bunch of people. It just really comes, it starts with, um, knowing what you want and what you're attracted to and just following that, that guidance system of joy and passion, whatever makes you happy. I love your answers. I'm going to need to listen back to this again. So I'll remember <laughs> all of it myself. So, but to summarize, you said the, the importance of a focus on helping others instead of making money, like instead of thinking, how do I get used to YouTube subscribers, I think, how do I help people on YouTube? And then you'll get subscribers. Or how do I, instead of thinking, how do I make 20000 a month or whatever, like, how do I help other people make money? Then it, it all just seems to materialize. That's a big, that's a big shift. Yeah, and to give you, like, aside from our, our Estatino Artist YouTube channel, that's what I'm doing on my music channel. Like, I... You know, I don't, I'm not just going to push my music. I'm actually also helping other musicians learn more as I'm learning more because I'm on my own journey with my music, um, learning lots of on Spotify and how to grow a following on Spotify. So wherever I'm learning something, I create a tutorial on it and release it on my music channel to help other artists. Yeah, that's our tactic on her channel as well because I was saying that most artists, most musicians are just going to pump their music out and they're just going to just put the music, music videos, lyric videos, that kind of thing, vlogs. And I said, we should do tutorials for music artists and then sprinkle in your music videos or whatever comes out. And so far it's like, it's working. Like I did a tutorial on how to do like a YouTube ad on um, how to how to promote your music video with YouTube ads. And that video got like, I don't know, what's it at right now? 22,000 views or something? It's helping a lot of people. And There's it's, so much engagement. It's getting more subscribers. So it's like, the more you focus on helping other people, like people are so grateful that we created this tutorial. They're now subscribed to Areed's channel. So then when she puts out a music thing, then they're more likely to watch mm -hmm. and more likely to be engaged with it. Well, I'm excited to hear what you think of my newest video promotion idea. I'm paying, I'm, I'm hiring girls on Fiverr to do, to dance to my music videos and I'm going to put those out. So I'm excited to see that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we are doing this live. We'll take a look back at the questions. Klutzy Chain says, bro, I want money. How can I strip on Fiverr? <laughs> HM is watching from Bangladesh. I love to know where you're watching from. Let us know where you're watching from. I'm live streaming from St. Petersburg, Florida with Jewel and Arit in Vancouver, Canada. We've got a few more questions. Umar Tanvir posted this twice, so I'm imagining he's really like an answer to this. Tanvir says, I'm a video editor by profession. So uh, I can I earn my livelihood regularly playing games on Facebook or putting videos of song covers on YouTube? I'm asking if it's a sure shot thing, not implying that I don't want to take risks, but is there any chance that nothing will happen? And if not, how long do you think it'll take for me to earn my livelihood? So it's about cover cover songs, releasing cover songs or video live. You video can probably gaming. answer the gaming one, Jerry. Yeah, I'm certain as a video editor, there's a ton of opportunities because the more of us that are creating videos, the more we need video editors. I've I've paid tens of thousands to a video editor and tens of thousands more for graphic design. Like video editing and graphic design are really in demand fields. To me, if you set up a profile on Upwork and on Fiverr and build your own website and do video tutorials, I mean, to me, that's like a certainty that that'll work out. Video editing is a really valuable skill. Uh, Umar says, can we target different things on one channel? For example, let's consider one domain is tourism and another is IT stuff. What do you think? Is it good or bad? And Zane says, how to make money from Facebook. 
So the the channel, so our channel covers various topics. Uh, it's not only on social media or only on making money online or only, you know, on one thing. Um, and we did it that way on purpose so that we're not kind of boxing ourselves into a specific topic because again, YouTube is a long-term game. You need to be able to do it day in and day out on, and you need to be passionate about what it is that you're talking about. So we actually often encourage, like if someone wants to do a channel on different things to put it in one channel. However, there is a, however, to that, if it's, two entirely different audiences, then it might be better to separate them and have two different channels. For example, so like I said, we release social media, mindset stuff, money making, uh, video editing, all of these little topics and things, they're all kind of for the entrepreneur. It's all kind of, it can be for one type of audience, um, for someone who's starting a small business. But, you know, with something like tourism and IT, um, you know, for IT, if you're teaching like tech stuff, then that might be, that's kind of one audience. I see it as a different audience from someone who is learning more about tourism. That's my, my take. I don't know if you have a different opinion on that. Um, well, I don't know if it's different. Like if you are just doing like travel vlogs, then I would say it's fine to incorporate oh, to show yeah. your personality and because um, people like to be connected. So it totally depends on how you're doing these tourism videos. If it's like you showing people around because you're making a living doing IT, um, these videos, so that I think can go together. Obviously these videos would go on different days. They wouldn't go on the same, same, you wouldn't, you would have segregated days on your channel that you would release these kinds of videos. So it does depend on what kind of tourism. Yeah, you're doing. I guess I was assuming that you like a tourism tourism channel would be like you teaching other people how to be good tour guides or something like that. If if that is the case, then it, it's, it's quite different. But yeah, if you're just doing vlogs, you're just wanting to show people your travel adventures, which is something we do on our channel too. It's just a way for people to connect with you and see your personality. Um, then it can go on one channel. And if you are doing it, like Jewel said, if you are doing those those topics, to have them on different days. Um, for just to give you another example, like my music, I don't release my cover songs and my Spotify tutorials and stuff on our Esatino channel. It's a separate channel because that's a different audience. So it kind of depends on what type of videos you're planning on doing. And if you are doing multiple channels, I would recommend that um, you build one channel first before you start creating another one and start doing two. Because a, a channel, one channel on its own is its own beast and machine. So you've got to master that first before you create another one. Well, I'm I'm loving this this interview with you guys. I am heading to dinner in like thirty minutes. So do you want to do another five or ten minutes, and we'll we'll sure. wrap up? This is so much fun. I love your advice. I've 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 just thrown everything into one channel, and that it can help to focus, but it can help also to split it. So I I love how you two have it set up with your you've got your music channel specifically for our read, and then everything else is in your main channel mm -hmm. let's see klutzy chain says i'm bored man how, how do i make money off dank memes <laughs> best <laughs> wishes and love from pakistan from umar how to make money on instagram but that way what if we just get rid of money <laughs> here all right umar i think we answered your question I think we've got through, it looks like we've got, what's up, Tony? I think we've got through all the questions that have been asked. I, we talked about, too, the think about how to help people instead of how to make money. And what would yeah. what would you like to add as we wrap up here? Do you think there's anything we that'd be good to talk about we haven't got yet? Or any stories you want to share? To speak to that Instagram, making money on Instagram, um, that's not something that we're like we're experts in or anything, but I do know that uh, e-commerce is doing really, really well, like selling, you know, whether it's fashion or art or anything like that. 
if you're selling, uh, if you have an e-commerce business, Instagram is really good and really helps with monetizing that. Um, they have integrations with like, for example, Etsy, where if someone clicks on a post from Instagram, they, it'll take them directly to that listing where they can purchase it and they can see the prices on Instagram and everything too. So um, yeah, just my two cents on that. But yeah, in general, it just, it all comes down to think about if you are someone who wants to get into entrepreneurship and start making money online, like I said, make a list of your strengths and what you love doing, start there and, and figure out a way to provide value to someone. Um, and you're not really going to know ahead of time that that will provide value to someone. You just have to jump. You have to test it. You have to do it. That's the only way you're really going to learn. Because I know there's like a lot of perfectionists out there, I, myself included, where you want to know all of the information up front and then you will make a move. <laughs> but um, it doesn't work like that. You you learn the most by actually doing and figuring it out from there. And I would say that um, it's definitely a long-term journey. Like we started this in 2010 and 11. It's 2019 right now. And we have had so many ups and downs, so many experiences. And one thing that we both knew when we went into the entrepreneur world was that we were never going to give up. Like we, it doesn't matter how many times we fall. Like we were just like, nope, this is, we're going to make this work because there were too many people succeeding in online entrepreneurship. And I was like, they're not much different than us. Why can't we do it as well? And I like to think of failure as when something fails and it doesn't work. Okay. You've now known that that doesn't work. So you move on to something else. So now it's like one less thing that you need to worry about. And you just move on to the next thing until it does work. And even though I got fired initially and that wasn't the plan, that was actually a blessing in disguise. A lot of things that are bad that happen are blessing blessings in disguise because yeah. it allowed us to for me to work on it full time while Arit still had her full time job and it allowed me to to move Esatino forward and then she was able to to join uh, later on and once you once you feel that freedom that on Monday morning you do not need to have to get on the sky train get on a bus drive in traffic like we would always be stuck in traffic for like an hour if there was a car crash or something like you were stuck in traffic and i remember taking the bus and it just was raining here and it smelled so bad on the bus and i was like i i always think about those moments that i don't have to do that anymore and when you have that taste of freedom i was like i don't care how long this takes and I, you know there were times where back. financially it was getting scary and I was like, I'm never going back. Like, I can't. I'm never. I've already made the decision that I'm never going back. And I think because we did that, and it's 2019 now, like, this has been a long journey. And there were people, like, in 2014 and 15 that were saying to us, like, hey, you've been doing this for a couple of for years. While, like, yeah. do you think you should have things going or you should go back to a job, do something else? And people were actually saying that to us. And I was like, you just have to tune it out because there's going to be naysayers. There's going to be haters all over the place online and in the physical world. Uh, you just have to ignore it. If you honestly want it bad enough, then you are going to push through all that crap. And we did. <laughs> so um, and now and we having, continue to do so. We're having a great yeah. time right now. It's not going to end. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole journey. Yeah, it's just it's an ongoing it's an ongoing thing. It's a way of life. Um, entrepreneurship is it's a way of life it's not necessarily a career that you choose so if you know if you want to try it jump in see if it's for you and be willing to deal with the the bad as well as enjoying and celebrating the good well that was just beautiful i've i've loved doing this you've you've provided so much value here that i want to go back and listen to this again myself so, I appreciate you both being here today. We've got to all the questions and thank you very much for you that are watching. I trust when you want some more from these two amazing ladies, you'll go to the Esatino Artists 
YouTube channel, look them up, hit that subscribe button, and start watching their videos. And I thank think- you, Absolutely, yeah, thank you for having us, Jerry, and thanks to everyone who's watching. Definitely come hang out with us on our channel, and if you really wanna fast track your learning with uh, starting a YouTube channel yourself, we do offer one-on-one -on -one YouTube coaching. Uh, and also do design work if you're ready to release some content on social media and start your own social media marketing campaign. So definitely get in touch with us. We'd be happy to help. Back, back, back from the dead.